I okay. People can hear us. No, people can hear me. You hear us? I think you say something. You can't hear me. No, they Hi. can hear you. Okay, beautiful. Hi, everybody. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I was about to start rapping, so it's like so good that you stopped. Me. Oh, what? No. <laughs> I mean, I don't want to stop the rapping. What are you talking about? No. Oh, hi, friends. <laughs> Welcome to a dungeon cool down. It's me, MPB, and Serena Marie uh, rhyming all day long. Serena coming to us from a Sailor Moon village, we were just saying. Wow. <laughs> With this a beautiful, is where I live. <laughs> this is my and, house. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, Serena lives there. Oh, wait. We can't hear Serena. Wait a minute. What? No. You can okay. hear it? Hmm. I can hear you. Say something. I can hear you. Oh, uh, okay. Okay. Say no, people say, people are saying they can. No to crit Phil said she can. Okay. Now you say, wait a minute. Oh. Uh, <laughs> people are saying they only want to hear you rapping. That's what it is. I'm confused. Uh, <laughs> Guys, I've had a rough tech morning. Don't do this to me. <laughs> Be straight with me. They just want to hear you rap. <laughs> Okay, no, okay, yeah. okay. <laughs> no, I think we're having a weird technical problem, Serena. They can only hear you if you rap. That's what's if happening. If I rap. Yes. Got it. <laughs> so, <laughs> do with uh... that what you will. <laughs> Oh goodness! Oh, I hi, see. Y'all. Hi, y'all. FF Gogo and TM Tapartos, Angel Devils, and thank you, friend. A Pantaloni. How are you? No to crit fail. So nice to see you all, uh, and a pleasant Memorial Day. Uh, uh, sending love to everyone. Uh, thank you so much for anyone who served for the United States or any other country. Uh, we're thinking of you. We appreciate you today. Uh, but yeah, we had a we had a lovely uh, day today. So we just wanted to jump in the chat and say hi. We had a lot to talk about, Serena. We got, I mean, we got a new episode coming. We got a new episode coming on yes. Wednesday. Uh, Wednesday. But I'm, I'm so happy to be here with you today because it was a big auto episode last, last, last episode. Lots going on. Oh, the boy, he's, he's struggling <laughs> a lot. He has a lot of things. The boy, happening. the boy be struggling. The boy be struggling. Um, but yeah. yeah, but you, I mean, let's before we get to that. So you were traveling last week, right? Uh, you. It was. Yes. You, you got to go to uh, Anime Central, right? You So you did this yes. awesome con last week, right? I did. So um, I am uh, working with uh, these really awesome folks at Six Sided, or Six Sides of Gaming. Yes. And they have Vince coordinated Vince Casso, our with friend, yes. This, this Vince. Love I love Vince. Vince. And um, also um, one of the co-founders, his name is Tommy. Okay, cool. He's a very nice man. Um, <laughs> But they um, have coordinated with a bunch of conventions like around the United States right. to um, do D and D live shows awesome. and uh, bringing uh, performers, but also designers and people who don't get um, to to perform in like that capacity often. Awesome. So, um, super fun show. You uh, did, I, you, I didn't. You played five games in two, three days. Well, so here's the thing. I, <laughs> when you have ADHD, sometimes you get really excited and you say, yes, I will yes, do the yes, thing, but yes, you don't read yes. the thing and you don't know what you're actually have agreed to. <laughs> um, and it was great, it was great, but it was definitely five games. Uh, both of them were like two hours, two and a half hours of straight up improv. Sure, and sure, Vince sure. and I are um like the the improvisers in the group so it's like whoo like this like gaunt improv uh tabletop rpg gauntlet yeah right that we ran um but it was so dope and like um i have it was my first anime convention amazing um yeah and so it was really cool to see everybody in costumes and um i've been to a lot of gaming conventions and a lot right. of entertainment expos right but not anime specific i don't think i've been either no that's awesome it was so great because I recently, within the last year, have gotten deep into anime. Uh, like, I have a subscription to Crunchyroll, and I'm like, great, Beautiful. I want to catch up on new anime because I only know old anime like right. Sailor Moon. Right. Yeah. Wait, so what uh, was the vibe of an anime convention different from a vibe from, from like, a Gen Con or, or gaming or, or, or like, a, a Comic-Con even? Or what, what, was the, yeah. what was the vibe check feel? I'm curious. So the vibe check was um, there was such an emphasis a beautiful emphasis on cosplay sure. um i all of those cons have cosplay but like there were um big like cosplay meetups so like they're on like the programming and scheduling they'd be like sailor moon in room 
ballroom yeah. or whatever. And it would just be like 45 sailor scouts. Wow. Just like <laughs> there vibing <laughs> with music, doing dances and filming each other. And it was like, it was so cool. What a reality um, we live in. There, That's incredible. <laughs> yeah. And there's a bunch of anime that I don't know. Right. So I'm just like, bah, I don't know what you are, but your vibe is dope like right. you're a, a, an entire tree walking around it's right. like good for you man, oh, like, man. uh we're seeing some yeah. people rodeo jones hey man how are you and chi town hey. sc nice to see you folks it's that lovely to see you uh yeah we're just getting started no to crit fail uh vince's full name is apparently vincent elizabeth queso uh yes see i vinnie cheese i know he's he's introduced himself as vinnie cheese to me before i mean <laughs> vinnie vinnie cheese vinnie queso <laughs> uh yes it's a, <laughs> incredible um but yeah you got a lot to travel and uh a lot of D and around the an good 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 yeah. anime folks back to chicago right because you back to chicago you lived in, you lived in uh, yeah chicago i lived there for a bit before you came to la yes yeah 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 so it, it, that was partly like a i don't know i was just so excited to be back in the city i hadn't been back since the the start of the pandemic right. when i when i moved it was the yeah. first time i've been there since i moved um, and just seeing my friends and visiting my like favorite restaurants. If you're in Chicago, uh, Small Chevelle, there's many of them now, which there was only like one before when I lived there and it's sure. uh, delightful burgers. Great. Did you do any deep dish pizza? Um, okay, so this is polarizing for people who do not live in Chicago, but mm -hmm. if you ever lived in Chicago, you will understand mm -hmm. what I'm about to throw down. Mm -hmm. People in Chicago don't eat deep dish pizza. I, it's it's I mean like, yeah it's a it's a once in a it's a once in an every time like the true deep dish yeah, pizza is it, one slice is a meal. It's not something you do a lot. Right, it's a casserole. <laughs> it's a it's casserole. really good, but it is absolutely a casserole. Uh, <laughs> Chicagoans <takes>. eat. <laughs> yes, uh, Chicagoans eat square cut tavern style pizza. Mm. Very and I, uh, and it's delicious. Uh, but I didn't have any pizza. Okay, but getting the truth. everybody's asked me about deep dish. Yeah, <laughs> that's the truth. I'm a pizza truther. So pizza, tr pizza truther, Serena Marie, welcome back. <laughs> we're we're covering the, the coziest side of the internet. Yeah, we're hitting you with a hard truth. Yeah, pizza about truther. Deep dish pizza. It's a casserole, <laughs> basically. It's a casserole. <laughs> The oh, bread man. bowl with sauce in it. <laughs> okay, so we're going to get to TDR stuff in just a second, but we did get started right before we came on the show because we've both been playing a lot of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. And yeah. uh, for those who don't have Tears of the Kingdom right now, uh, it's an incredible game in that, it boy, it just lets you do whatever you want. <laughs> whatever you want. There's you a can story, build there's stuff, but... Things. You get horses. You can put flowers in your horse's mane. Did you, you know that? You can, oh, I, I just didn't learned that. Know that. You can you can uh, help a guy hold up a sign and take hours doing it. I mean, like literally, like that is hours. Yeah, it, the, and you build stuff, and uh, the building of stuff has been the craziest part. <laughs> What's the most uh, impractical thing you've built? Oh gosh, the most impractical thing. Um... Or weirdly, or practically okay, so, impractical. I don't. <laughs> so like, I I think I was really proud of this build initially. Um, I posted it on Twitter. Uh -huh. I was genuinely so proud. Oh, I think I saw um, this. I had a a rocket ship. <laughs> I had a kind of yeah. So I had a wing, like a a, a X wing thingy, mm -hmm. and um, a controller on it, and I was like, heck yeah, I can control it. I had two fans, batteries on the fans, and like little rockets to help accelerate me. Because mm -hmm. I know that the rockets are going to break away, but I wanted that extra boost. Turns out my fans backwards. Oh, and no. And my rocket you had the fan. attached to the fan and not the... <laughs> and then, so, as I blasted off, it's it's like, um, like a real spaceship, how you lose things. Right. Uh, I lost... The fans and the rockets. <laughs> I had one fan. I started spinning, and oh, you could no. hear the clink of my trying to write my thing because I didn't know that my fan was backwards, and so it was 
spinning me this way. Wow. So like, it was it was a mess. It's really um, it's really a lot allowed for some pretty hilarious moments uh, already. Uh, it's it's pretty crazy. It's a Looney Tunes simulator. <laughs> it's a Looney Tunes simulator. It's, it's Wiley Coyote. Absolutely, it's Wiley Coyote. That it's Legend of Zelda yeah. Wiley Coyote edition. It's absolutely true. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's it takes, <laughs> can take up so much of your time, uh, but in a beautiful, beautiful what way. What about you? Um, I mean, I I've enjoyed. I haven't gotten too crazy. Like I've seen people build entire tanks and stuff like that. The stuff that made Wild. Crystal and I uh, very frustrated yesterday, it, though I'm laughing at it, is yeah, there's literally this guy around who's always trying to hold up a sign and you have to build something to help him hold up the sign. Crystal's constructions mm -hmm. to- I've gotten good at him. I've gotten quite good at it as well. She will always, and often I think she does this just to drive me crazy, uh, she will build a 12 part like thing that still doesn't even really hold it up. <laughs> and it was like, what is it? It's like, like, looks like she's building a Trojan horse and it will only sort of hold it up. She's like, here, I'll just throw this here. And I'm like, what are oh, you doing? What are you that's doing? That's <laughs> so funny. Yes. Uh, but she, I think she's embracing the fact that you can build a way out of any solution. So, she, you, you know, it's like uh, she'll build a mile long dock. Uh, and I'm like, what, what, why? Okay, sure. <laughs> I need this dock. You could have just walked to I've, that part and just done it, but absolutely that's... <laughs> not. It's very. I think the only. <laughs> <laughs> well, the sign guy. I figured out the trick for me is like making a corner to hold the tip of the sign. Yeah, right. If I can secure a corner, right. Then and and wait the and back. And you gotta counter it's it. Good. Yes, yeah, it's absolutely true. Yeah. Anyway, welcome back to uh, Zelda talk. <laughs> what up? But those Koroks, man, I'm forever traumatizing them. I'm trying my best to save them. These poor little like, guys being so who just want your help. Delicate. <laughs> Their backpacks are too big. Too big. Absolutely like, too big. Too big. Anyway. So, anywho. <laughs> we can talk about that for the rest hey of the guys. day. But no, we're here on the Dungeon Run. Hi, friends. Yes. Um, okay. So as I was saying, though... Uh, we do have questions from Patreon, patreon.com slash the dungeon run. Protect the smalls, says Angel Double said. You're absolutely right, Angel. Um, the So last episode was a big secret reveal episode for you, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, and those are yeah. those are fun, but their own kind of their own kind of stressful. Um, and I wanted to talk to you because I was super curious. We knew that Otto was hiding a lot of stuff. Um, I still don't know if we know everything about Otto, but obviously that was a big... You never will. You never will. I, I thought that too. You never I, will. I thought that afterwards I was like, I don't think Val is currently keeping any secrets. Thanks for your subscription, Blue Elf. We appreciate you. Um, I don't think Val is actively keeping any secrets, but sure, there's stuff about Val that you don't know. Um, yeah. Just because no one's asked or, you know, there's... Yeah, there's all kinds of stuff there. But um, the moment that you... I find it super interesting why we keep those secrets. And then the moment that triggers it for you where you go, all right, time to come clean. And you you very mm -hmm. clearly had that moment this last episode, right? Where it's like, okay, we, we, I think you even said, like, I got to break an oath. <laughs> I got to go upstairs I gotta break an oath. and we're going to break an oath. And it's like, whoa, okay. Yeah. All right, time to break an oath, I guess. But yeah, I mean, <laughs> I what what tipped it what, for for you in terms of Otto had been keeping this secret, sworn to keep this secret, but it, it kept coming up, and you know we'd been seeing obsidian things as far back as I want to say like episode four or five, right? Mm -hmm. And and we yeah. always caught Otto's kind of you know poofing up a, sl a little bit when it would happen, but never really knowing what the deal was. So what do you think finally did it for Otto for you to to really kind of like, no, it's time to let them in on this? Um, I think that uh, Ron did a, a great job at like hinting that this is not only like a, with, with anything, there are degrees of severity. Right. And uh, I think Ron did a really good job at being like, there is weapons upon weapons upon weapons of obsidian yeah. coming into this place yeah. and like um whether or not this is really reality or a dream or part of the gauntlet oh we're gonna get to um, that. <laughs> <laughs> um I, I think for auto it's it's very much like 
I've traveled with these people for a very long time. And if I can't trust them with this, then what's the point? And I, it's sort of like a, a frustrated, like I, I need help. Yeah. Like, and, and the only way for, for me to not be real shady and weird about it yeah. is just to come clean. And I, um, as a performer, I wanted to give it weight. Um, and I want it to be like, why Otto? Because this is essentially his biggest secret. Mm. Like, I when I when I say like, you'll never know about Otto. Just it's just because I make stuff up all the time. Sure. Like while we're playing, I'm like, oh, this is true about him. He thinks right. this. Like I, I don't know, but like from the jump, from character creation. This has been um, the the one thing that Otto um, has sworn to protect. Yeah. Um, and so I wanted to make sure that it had that like um, that weight. It wasn't like, hey, hey guys, this is how I feel. No, you know what sure, I mean? Right. No, that was yeah. yeah that, I thought that was beautifully done by you. Uh, I really and 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 it was. We had always, I think Val was sort of drawn to that that aspect of Otto, which was this kid, uh, you know, adult, fully mm -hmm. adult, uh, but this fully adult, th yes, uh, this kid who seemed to have the weight of the world on their shoulders, and um, mm -hmm. and not really knowing what that was about, and knowing and wondering what what it was that they were keeping and finding out that, yeah, that they were, that, that Otto is this sworn protector of this, of this element of this, of this type of, this type of mm -hmm. stone. And we still don't know. We got a lot of, there's a lot of strings, a lot of red uh, conspiracy strings on the board now, friends. Yes. Uh, so much to talk about in that regard. But I, I think, you know, I, yeah, I, I think I was probably Jared and I probably vied for the title of the biggest secret keepers of season one of campaign one. And I had a similar <laughs> thing where it was, I, I think when I finally realized that I needed to stop hiding things was after one of the times I had died or like I had gone into death saving throws. Oh my God. And yeah. there were things that like, I was like actively, if this secret dies with me, it will hurt other people. And that's selfish. Mm -hmm. And so it's really interesting yes. to go like what triggers it in us to go now's the time got to do this because yeah, I, I hate and you and I've talked about this before I hate forced moments I hate feeling like yeah, you know, it's a secret for a reason you genuinely and you take it seriously. Um, so if you just come out and go, hey guys, uh, yeah. Hey guys, Obsidian is very limited of a resource. Did I not tell you that? Uh, sorry. <laughs> Did I not tell you? It's, uh, the magical veins of the world. <laughs> uh, um, yeah. Yeah, and, and especially that it happened on the same episode where, where Val went ham on those on those two uh, uh, souls, whatever they were, uh, that we were fighting with the Obsidian hand axe. It was sort of all kind of started yeah. to come clear and yikes. Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, goodness And gracious. the fact that it, it absorbed the things, I didn't know it did that. Like, nope. it, there's... A lot of, which I really As you love said, about. a lot of absorbing going on, but what were you going to say? Sorry. There's so much absorption <laughs> just happening. <laughs> 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 um, but, like, I think that's what's so cool about um, tabletop RPGs as, like, a medium, that we don't know... Like, we know from our character's point of view what yeah. is true for us. Yeah. But uh, Ron and, you know, Jared as well, like, they created the world and the gravity yeah. in which we live in. Right. Like, they created all of the physics of this world. And so I know how I feel based of about an obsidian and about, like, the folklore of, like, my Outland cave people. Um but whether or not that's true mm -hmm. is very fascinating to me. Right. Because, like, I, uh, I after the show, and I don't know if this is too much inside baseball, but, like, this is the dungeon cooldown, so it feels... Do it. So yeah. it's like, this is our vibe? Absolutely. This is the vibe. <laughs> vibe. Um, but I, um, on my ride home with Ron, I was like, 
hey, like, dude, like, let me know if I overstep, <laughs> like, story wise, because like, I'm fully just improvising. Right. I'm fully improvising things I've heard in folklore and all of these things that like, we didn't discuss, like, um, and he's like, no, like, everything that we're adding as characters, it makes the story richer, and it gives him something to pull from later. Yeah, Which absolutely. is, like, because, like, yeah, that's what's cool about the collaborative nature of everything that we do. Yeah, it's all kind of getting added to the tapestry, right? And, um, and yeah. yeah, and that's, and, and there is, I, I do the same sometimes where it's like, is that an overstep into the story? Did I suddenly, yeah, I'm like, you know, but it's like, did I break it? You find yeah. out later, it's like, no, oh gosh, the fact that you made it a dwarf, like completely ruined everything. And it's like, no, 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 that's fine. Mm -hmm. um, Noda Crit Fail says, I just want to know that Uncle Jeb Jeb is okay. So do I. Me too. Uncle Jeb Jeb, I hope he's fine. I was going to say, I think, I was that, it feels like that was most of your session zero then. Yes, I mean, it was that sort of setup and everything like that there may be other things i still haven't seen it. oh my god i could tell you about my session zero because my secret has been revealed oh. i just realized this <laughs> oh. uh yeah it, uh essentially Otto was sent on a little like mission mm -hmm. to like suss out some weird noises and um you know, we learned about the obsidian. We learned right. we met Uncle Jeb Jeb. I had an NPC, which will be unnamed, that Otto has a crush on. Oh, that you will never see. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> he, don't say we'll never see them. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we'll see. But Otto, if they have a crush on someone, they can't talk words to them. Cute. Which so it was very fun. <laughs> <laughs> Adorable. Um. Yeah, and then. Uh, 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 the obsidian figure came and things got bad um that was essentially their session zero That's i thought it was a dream oh. but it was real and so two uh -huh. of otto's new friends were incinerated you know not a big deal uh okay. kill and fine <laughs> all fine that sounds yeah that sounds all traumatic fine. which makes sense right because you came in with the haunted one background so it makes sense you yeah. signed up for the trauma at that point yeah i did yeah. i just you know the thousand yard stare that's <laughs> auto's default expression sure <laughs> good point uh i wanted to uh and ghostbusters quick response unit from on the patreon asked a great question the next thing i wanted to get to specifically yeah. I'm kind of, we're kind of we're kind of drilling you a little bit today and i'm sorry about that serena but there's no it's great all the questions i mean <laughs> yeah i have a protein drink here i have taken my adhd medicine let's go let's go <laughs> all right so uh ask specifically ghostbusters quick response unit about that what made you come up with Otto and the gauntlet i i loved I loved the, I was thrown. I was like, what? Um, but then it was, <laughs> I loved the fact that, so so we originally introduced the idea of the little totem because you had travel. Mm -hmm. it, it would just happen for your work yeah, every now and like my that. Job you would just, me, your job yeah, occasionally made, made you have to travel. And so yeah. we came up with the totem as a, as a, a convenient reason to kind of, you know, pull you in and out. And the fact mm -hmm. that, and we had never really explained like what happened to Otto in the totem. So the fact that you came out of this and we're just like, oh, <laughs> it was like, <gasps> <laughs> what? What happened? What? 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 What happened? <laughs> and yeah, what? Where did the gaunt? Where did the the gauntlet of Bahatha came come from for you? So, uh, I would love to say that I <laughs> knew before coming into this session. Uh, but so I was thinking about um, like also like this new chapter as well and like different like energy I want for um, Otto. Cause I think the like when we last, last left right. them and like way before they, they jumped into the, the totem last time, um, I think I was struggling with feeling like overwhelmed mm -hmm. Like, I think that, like, Otto had, like, uh, uh, too many things had happened. Sure. And, like, I didn't know a little bit as an actor, like, how to, like, yeah. play somebody who has been given the will of Bahatha and what that means right. without, like, having main character energy because right. I didn't want that. Um, so when we came back and I was in um, the green room before that episode yeah. and I'm like, I, I would love to come in with a change. I love it. 
and like what does that change and how and and, yeah, and, yeah. and how and why and um M multiple people are mentioning so how I, much they love the voice drop as well <laughs> yes oh, deeper oh, yeah God. and that's the thing too like i i wanted also to change my voice and pitch it down because um i wanted in, in one of the things i wanted to explore in this campaign is aging mm. so auto in the session one is very young but i'm trying as we go along i'm trying to age him yeah which is just a fun like performance thing so yeah. his voice is getting a little deeper I love that. um but i wanted him to be baby batman when he came out so <laughs> that's really it that's all like, yeah ten. say no more <laughs> <laughs> baby batman oh, uh yeah baby, that's baby batman and um the idea of like the the gauntlet specific was a like from the like it was an improv thing i like uh shouted and declared <laughs> as soon as i said it and i was like oh boy guess, here we go guess that's a and thing like, now <laughs> guess that's the thing and um I, this is a very silly improv thing, but there's this um, thing called game of scene. Mm, yeah. So um, in in improv, you have like what is your character's like touch point they keep coming back to. Yeah. And in that episode, I was like, let's freaking go the gauntlet. <laughs> this is what happened, and just like making it worse. Right. <laughs> um, I... And it was just so fun. <laughs> and then the. So then it was the next session or or it yeah. was where where you said, wait a minute, I'm still in it. Yeah. Or 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 and that was I I because I totally feel you on the response. It, it's funny because I I think we are all the characters were dealing with that feeling of overwhelm, the feeling of this weight mm -hmm. of the world literally dropped on you by the gods and all of this stuff and certain yes. And Val has responded, to, Val has felt that too. It responded very differently. Val has just kind of gotten like, what's the road in front of me? How do I go, you know, what do I got to do next? What mm -hmm. wall do I have to knock down? Where, you know, yeah. like, who do I have to stab? You know, what do who I do have I to do? Who do I have to stab? Just, just point just, me in that direction. Yeah, just keep me stab, going. Stab, stab. Right? Exactly. Yeah. And um, and that's how, how he's sort of adjusted. But it's so funny to me you know how the different characters are responding to all this pressure mm -hmm. and and the realization that Otto thinks yeah this is all a simulation which i i loved it um because it was and i i saw people in the discord as well saying like i love that it's a decision you serena obviously know it's not true um but oh, also it's like yeah I, it's real life for sure <laughs> But also, and you set it up so much that you're not like, cause, cause Josephine had that moment of like, wait a minute, are you going to put yourself or us in danger? Cause you think this is all a joke. And it was like, no, mm -hmm. the stakes are still high for Otto. Otto just thinks it's not mm -hmm. real. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and I think that's, that's great or not real, not totally real. I think that's super interesting. I can't wait to see how that will spider out in what it's one of those big things that's now just been introduced where it's like oh i don't know how that's gonna pay off or blow up in our face or or emotionally devastate or lift us up or or i don't know and it's one of those things yeah yeah i <laughs> know to crit fails is totally not a simulation but what if i know i think but what if what if val is intensely practical so he's just basically like what no that's nonsense but kind of the the uh, longer it's like would be kind of nice if it was though <laughs> <You know>? i <laughs> as um on a meta level i'm making it my business to try to convince everybody it is a simulation oh, no. like... <laughs> oh no oh no um, it would be kind of nice if it was <laughs> it would right. be so nice <laughs> um but like i think that there's something about um because auto i think that he deals a lot with fear hmm. um he's afraid of the world is very big and it's bigger than he thought it was the sky is kind of terrifying well, right just like if you've lived complete... underground right. forever and you look at the sky for the first time it's beautiful and Scary. And now we're on a completely different plane 
or There's are planes? we? Or are we? We think yes. we're in a different plane, but Rhea's a uh, story about an underground cavern where there were ancient like glyphs and stuff that she saw it was like a wait a minute what there's something beneath this we'd been sold that yeah. the city of glass was just yeah we created this out of nothing hail lumbra mm -hmm. and it was, was it like, built on a different city what there's so much going on there's so much going on um yeah. but yeah i i sort of i I love I love the the idea of the gauntlet and and how that it's continuing for you because I don't know I don't know where it's going like a gauntlet like like a labyrinth or something like, like a that. gauntlet <laughs> well well I just think too like um from a a practical sense too like if if Bahatha had put placed Otto into this totem it has to be for something yeah right. I didn't want my oh, like right. like going on a trip to be like, oh, this is just a plot thing we do. I wanted to give it like something really interesting. And so now Beautiful. every time I go on a trip, yeah. I'm back in that thing. And you can assume a gauntlet is happening. <laughs> something is going on in there. And it gives me as a player, um, instead of having to know what happened in a previous episode, yeah. I'd be like, oh man, I befriended so many animals or you right. know what it you right. like i can just say whatever um i love that it's it's creatively speaking some of my favorite creative moments not just in in D and D and ttrpg stuff but in, in mm -hmm. movie making and in acting come out of random circumstances that had nothing to do with your original thing but just you making the most out of the circumstances you're presented with the circumstances mm -hmm. that you had to travel every now and then you had to and so as your character it's like well we put you in this little thing and it was like well yeah it could have just been a blank room that Otto sat in and did nothing was like no, just like slept <laughs> right it's like no that's an opportunity there's something yes. there let's extrapolate on that let's take this little corner mm -hmm. and let's decorate it and turn it into this own little world and its own amazing chapter yeah. and i love that i i think that's really a, a beautiful opportunity and, and really nicely done yes have you seen um are you were you ever like a buffy the vampire slayer fan are you kidding all day yeah no no okay full, fully yeah you, you were yeah fully. you and i i don't think you and i've talked about this much it's one of my favorite no. shows of all time you you can you can it's nerd one out of my favorite shows of all time all time <gasps> you can nerd out on okay. buffy all you want I'll, I'll be right there with you don't worry so um <laughs> there is this episode um Season that i'm six. obsessed with uh, oh wait, no the 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 uh, asylum. The Xander episode. Oh, the Z the Zeppo one. <laughs> yes, From and so there is like Xander is on his own mission. He is having his own episode. thing. Yes, and every now and then you see the main episode, and it's Buffy and it's Angel, and they're like, "We're gonna save the world." There's the a, end of the world. Oh, total wow. apocalypse happening over There's here. There's an apocalypse. <laughs> Xander is just like running through the school hallway being chased by like zombie dude bros. He's like, yes. ah, like he gets um, a nice and car so, and then wrecks it like or something car. like that. Yeah. Yeah. It's season oh, three episode. This is how big of a nerd I am. It's a season three episode called the Zeppo. Uh, it's a fantastic based on Zeppo Marx, the, the, the one who doesn't, the, the Marx brother who doesn't do anything. Uh, he's just off oh. to the side and doesn't do anything. He's the Zeppo of the group. He's the Zeppo of the group. Oh my it's God. A I, I, the episode. fact that you, it's so good I'm, I'm and <laughs> thank you and i love that in like a literary sense yes. i love those episodes where you see the side characters having their whole day right yeah it's the rosencrantz yeah. and guildenstern are dead it's you know it's all of this like it's just you know mm -hmm. everyone has a life right everyone yes. has a, yes. it's you know before we were the stormborn before we were these important things like you have no idea the effect that your life has on the world around you and if we did we yeah. would probably be driven insane right no it's too much information i don't want that absolutely information. not <laughs> yeah oh god no that just depressed myself thinking about that for a second <laughs> <laughs> dungeon speedrun says fingers crossed that we'll get a tdr once more with feeling musical episode i mean yeah Oh, I mean, gosh. gosh, I haven't rewatched Buffy into in, it. in a minute. I love that show so much. It's uh, so good. Yes. Woof. Um, yeah. No, this brings me to something that 
I I, to, I wanted to talk a little bit about Rhea as well. Well, well, you yes. and I are here. let's 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 dish on Rhea a little bit. Don't Josephine yes, if you're in get chat. into it. <laughs> uh, by the way, ignore this, Josephine. But also, we love you. I'll tease this. I'll tease this. For, I I think I think we're about to see some uh, some Rhea character art might debut on Wednesday. Some of us Ooh. might have glimpsed it a bit already, and it's a gorgeous. Uh, but it's yes, beautiful. JD Illustrates is almost done with the Rhea character art, and you're going to see it very soon, my friends. Um, but Rhea kind of further cemented this idea with Val where Val already had this, he's been surrounded by powerful people his whole life. And he's learned that basically like, yeah, they're not that much different than you or I, you know, you just, they're not that much smarter. They just have more money, you know, they're not that much. Yeah. You know, they're not geniuses. They just, they just can see more things or whatever. Which is real life. That's so I love that about Val because that's, that's real like celebrities and other people in power they're not different than you they i've just said that so many times twitter has twitter and social media have laid this bear over the last 10 years that the old conspiracy theories that there are these all-knowing all-powerful puppet masters who are controlling everything it's like no there are a lot of idiots just like us i mean maybe, maybe they're not there's a few really smart people out there there are yes uh they're very rare <laughs> and most of them aren't aren't any smarter than you or me or anybody and so, yeah. so that can be a little scary uh but mm -hmm. also it's imposter syndrome again too, right? Where it's just sort of like, yeah. Michelle Obama had a quote about that too. She's like, she's like, you know what helped me having st stop having imposter syndrome is realizing that people on the other side of the table aren't smarter than me. They might know a little bit more about that. They're just not geniuses. Sub like on a subject, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know, they might be a little more specific. And so mm -hmm. Val has kind of started to adopt that. It's like, all right, you might be a god and sure you might be able to like, smite me i suppose but mm -hmm. also you've got jealousies and selfish reasons and and all the mm -hmm. and and you're you're not infallible you're throwing things right you make mistakes if you are so all powerful why right. aren't i dead <laughs> right exactly all, why, why can't <laughs> yeah. you why do you need me stupid me yeah. val who's never stupid me who's failed at pretty much everything he's tried why do you yeah. need me just solve it yourself mm -hmm. oh you need me okay hmm mm -hmm. um and this lumbra seeing how people are dealing with lumbra and it's it's mm -hmm. reminded me and of i think val of business negotiations where it was literally mm. how quick we suddenly were like being asked to just say lumber is your God and everything will be cool for you in this place. And, yeah. Yeah. and it was like, <laughs> Val was like, I don't, Val, I will say this. I am very clear. And I think Val knows too. There will probably be a reckoning with Thasha to come later on. Oh, as soon as that thunder hit, I was like, ooh, she mad. Ma ma She's so mad. Mama Thasha gonna be real mad at us at some point. But yeah. we gotta get out of here. And we don't have a choice. We had no choice. And so it, no. was, it was such a marriage of convenience of this kind of like, mm -hmm. Oh, and and then you see Rhea, who's suddenly like, who's seemingly the, you know, cho the the highest of the high, the chosen one, kind of going, just say yes come on get yourself out of here and it was and it was so practical that it was kind of like all right it's just like a business partnership it's a i need to partner with this per with this corporation with this deity with this whatever mm -hmm. right now to get this part of my thing done and thasha might be real mad at me later but what what else were we supposed to do get Which, killed immediately I, get I killed yeah. get murdered uh, what's so funny to me about um, Rhea is that they have such a duplicitous nature. Mm -hmm. Like, they're just like, yeah, like, yeah, I serve both, but like, it's not a big deal. Also, let's all be sneaky. Let's all just lie to the people I serve. And I'm like, Right. What? <laughs> like, right. excuse me. And there were um, there were yeah. uh, hints being dropped 
a lot last mm-hmm. episode. Of- yes, I had to rewatch it because I didn't catch just a them. couple things. And I, the ones that <laughs> yeah. I noted, one of them we made a clip. It's on. It's one of our TikTok and in social media clips. Is is when she changed into Cristobal and how she described the magic wasn't at all a Lumbra style description. Oh, wait, what? I don't, when, I have to watch that. Okay. This is, this might be Morgan on a, out on okay, a limb no, no. here. Uh, let's red string let's this. Let's red string it. All right, let's bring them out. Yeah. Um, Lumbra's so two-faced. <laughs> Dungeon speed run. It's very true. Um, the, yeah. So when, so Cristobal is, we know, a, a chosen of Lumbra. So some of his magic, mm-hmm. the, you get those little mechanical spiders, right? Yes. And it's very mechanical and it feels very of Lumbra. Judging by everything mm. else we've seen, metal and glass, nothing organic, all this stuff. There a couple times with Rhea now. Oh, I know what you're talking about now. Oh, sorry. A couple Continue. times there's been hints and and elements of her magic that are like, that doesn't feel like Lumbra at all. Mm-hmm. And and so I just, I don't know what it means. I don't know what it means, but it doesn't ring true to me. It doesn't, and there's been something about her. And, and I think Val, Val doesn't trust her, but not yet anyway. But also Val, I think, understands her enough to go, like, she's only been lumbering for like a week, right? Says Dungeon Speedrun. I don't know. It's hard to, time is weird, as we've said. It's, it's hard to tell I, how long she's been here. Um, one of the things I do in every character I play, because I, I, I am this way, um, is I'm incredibly blunt. And I think that Otto has asked Rhea point blank, mm-hmm. um, you want to escape just like us. Um, you, um, she said there was someone she's trying to get back to. She said that, right? Yeah. That that was, that was a big old hint drop as well. I don't know what that means. Yeah. yeah. I don't know what that means, but also you used to be a cleric of someone else. Uh, and they got so cagey and it's it's such a tiny moment because I think, uh, people were talking Mm -hmm. and I very quietly said it to, to Rhea as Otto and jo- both Josephine and Rhea were like, do not engage. <laughs> like they were like, no. Um, <laughs> and so um, I'm going to continue and we should all continue to poke, poke the Rhea. Poke, poke the Rhea. <laughs> for info. Josephine, we're going to keep poking uh, you. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, with love. <laughs> we love you. We love you so much. Um, yeah. I And that that is, again, such a, a testament to Josephine's performance and just yeah. the amount of depth and detail she brought immediately mm-hmm. was just kind of like, oh, what? And yeah. And yeah, I think Val... Val understands, Val doesn't trust her, but he understands she's willing to do what she needs to do to get out of here, which is how he might be in a certain situation where they kind of have that in common. Yeah. Yeah. It was like, you're just, you're just playing the game until you can find your exit and uh, hashtag relatable. I get that. Yeah. All day. Well, yeah, especially like um, and this kind of jumps back to like the fact that Thasha is probably so mad at so us. Mad at us. <laughs> um, we were given the option to choose Lumbra. Granted, if we didn't, we would be Wouldn't. withering souls. We would either be dead, mm-hmm. or we wouldn't. Yeah, what? No, I don't think we. Mm, I we weren't. We aren't souls. We're people. So I don't know if we would be full. I, you might be right. I don't know if we'd be full withering souls yet, though. That's, yeah, uh, that's the other mystery yeah, of this know. place is where are all the <laughs> souls coming from? Like, I don't know. It's this place yeah, isn't it, isn't the afterlife, but there's a lot of souls showing up. It's like a transport second place. It's like the limbo. It right. feels like. Uh oh, Ron's in chat. Uh, Ron's in chat. Everybody. <laughs> uh, uh, everybody be cool. Everybody be cool. <laughs> uh. <laughs> uh, hey buddy, nothing going Hi, on here. Hey, how's it going? Yeah, we're, not, we're not talking about things. It's no, fine. No, it's fine. 
<laughs> uh, anyway, Breath of the Tears of the Kingdom, right? Tears of the Kingdom, right? Uh, we were talking about Zelda. Uh, no. <laughs> yeah, the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's just Zelda chat over here. Um, yeah. No, uh, Ron, clarify this. Uh, where do those souls come from? Okay, yes. that That is li- wh- what we were just talking about. Uh, succession finale. I mean, if you want me to start crying, I'll get there. <laughs> Um, anyway, moving on. Um, but yeah, it, it's it's this so many questions about the city of glass. The fact that it's mm-hmm. not, the fact that it seems to have been built on top of something. The mm-hmm. fact that, um, the fact that I think the fact that the umbral governor um, Baron Medjulon's time is waning. He is mm-hmm. in power right now, but he's about to not be. That means he might be about to get real desperate. Yeah, that's all I can see. Like it, you have I think t- the someone who has been in power, mm-hmm. and they um, are, are unwilling to relent that power. It's a dictatorship, Don't essentially, right? Yep. Uh, and so, if if I were him, if I were the Umbral Governor. Uh, Are you the emperor? This is. <laughs> I mean, Come clean. Come who in, knows? Come clean. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but if I were, um, it, what he's doing, or at least from the outside, makes so much sense. Mm-hmm. It's like great, like knowing that one obsidian holds can absorb souls, can hold these things, and make it more powerful. Right. Um, essentially, creating an an army or a bunch of very uh, weapons or something and we learned those to... souls can be used to fuel portals to elsewhere last episode that was right the, the, what nithzir the the gith uh the, all of their stuff uh no to mm-hmm. fail i got conspiracies all day unfortunately i'm sorry <laughs> um so yeah because so, so that's it's nithzir the gith ha- can use those souls to mm-hmm. to fuel uh can to to fuel all of the all of the the portals. Uh, I've got a couple oh. more. Ah, Tuo Mask. I just saw that you posted one. Okay, great. We we will get. We got a couple more Patreon questions. We've just been getting off on things. Oh, but we should. Yeah, we should. Sorry. I know. <laughs> no, but it's absolutely great. Um, yeah. in, in terms of the fact that the the they're using all these souls, but why do they have the corruption there? Because I don't think. I think Medjulon is. I think Medjulon is to blame for all the obsidian. But they had that mm-hmm. barrel of corruption underneath the warehouse. Something tells me that that they might be in cahoots with each other. Whoever's behind the corruption, I don't think the Baron's behind the corruption, though. I don't think that they're behind the corruption, but I will say again: if I were evil, I'm not. <laughs> um, but if I were, go on. <laughs> um, and. And if my um, my thing was progress, yes, because like Lumbra and um, or oh god, Umbreth and Luminoth, Luminoth yes, L- Luminoth are Lumbra, mm-hmm. right? They right. are the same, right? Um, so there has to be something in the the dark, shadowy place that uh, believes in progress, mm-hmm. and there are some villains like Thanos who believe. The progress. Only way to progress. Um, from starting over. Destruction. Destruction. Burn so that's down. my two cents. Burn it down. I'm, I'm not evil. I'm I'm an auto. Right. I'm a little little boy. Well, and and we still okay. So this actually uh, leads to a great question from Tapartos, uh, which is uh, for on the Patreon. Have either of you made a mental list of all the things that still need to be finished in the outside world? If so, what would your characters think is the most important one that needs to be dealt with? Uh, I mean, Ooh. Sasha being mad at us <laughs> probably so mad. probably is going to be pretty yeah. high up on that list. Uh, but also, yes. I mean, the corruption is still there, and that yeah, Val that was Val's biggest frustration about getting whisked away to the City of Glass was he had he had really only just bought in to that, really kind of going like, all right, this is what I can do. I can I can help my family and I can help people by doing this. Um, then, then fine. Let's do. Let's stop this corruption. Let's kill Gramora or whomever or whomever is behind Gramora. Gramora and City of Glass don't feel like they mesh too much. Mm-hmm. So I'm feeling like even though <clears throat> Medjulon might have a barrel of of corruption down there, something tells me those are two different 
aspects of the it, bad stuff we're dealing with. Yeah, I feel like it's to study. To be honest, I feel like maybe. it's to understand and study. Right. Uh, or maybe it's to unleash. Who knows? Well, but... in that, if everything, if we are able to make this thing, things more okay in the City of Glass, I don't know. Um, if we're able to get out of the City of Glass, that is a, a question burning in the back of my head. And maybe it is for you too. Where do we go from here? Yeah, I I, I think the world is very big. Yeah. Um, and it, it's hard to, to know what the next thread would be like pulling us to we were on um, our way to to atos peak um mm -hmm. when, when all this happened and maybe that still is the place to go um mm -hmm. be, and especially with now what we know about the obsidian which is you know and, yeah. and all those people are there right that makes a lot of sense yeah um, i think that that's where i would want to go is yeah. i Speaking of Uncle Jeb Job, I would love to do a wellness check. You know what I mean? Like, I want to make sure check. he's still okay. <laughs> Noda Crit Fail says, please go check on Uncle Jeb Jeb. Agreed. Yes. yes. Um, I mean, but there is also... It, Val's, Val's a little uh, conflicted because I think he wants to check on his family. But I mm -hmm. think he knows that he's not a lot of help to them yet. Which is sad. Um... But I, well, I your self esteem, your seeds. You just need all the seeds. <laughs> thank, you, thank you. I'll take the yeah. seeds. Much appreciate mm -hmm. it. I, I think I, you know, um, the, the that the, and that's based directly on his session zero. Uh, I don't. It was one of those. Tell do, me. Do they want him Tell there? Me. It was. It was a very. It was a very <laughs> mixed feeling, and and he had left. And some of them had felt abandoned by him leaving, even though he left because he felt he wasn't wanted, which is very real and very, you know, why did you leave? You didn't want me here. Why, yeah. you know, and oh, so it, it was... Like black sheep stuff. Yeah, it was really rough. And so he, I think, has bought into this, to this Stormborn thing of, of stopping the corruption and helping his family that way because mm -hmm. he's tried to help them the by being present and you know helping with the business and doing all these things and failed miserably and so um yeah speaking of succession like yeah val is a little bit kendall roy after he's entirely screwed up and he's found the thing that he's maybe found the thing that that, that could be his identity and could be the thing he's good at oh. um and so but but still but still he's worried about them still he wants to know they're okay and so mm -hmm. yeah that that's gonna be hard um but yeah i don't know we still have so much to do there we we still have so much to unpack with cristobal's father emotionally uh you know oh my gosh oh i know Ugh. are any other things Ball and cristobal <laughs> any other things any other dangling threads in in outside the city of glass that are that are bothering Otto? i mean I don't know much about this obsidian figure that that gave gave Otto the burn. What do you think? Uh, you don't have. Oh, to say I would love to avoid them. I will never fight them. I will never That's right. um, approach them wherever they are. I would love to be away from them. <laughs> Got it. So <laughs> um, that's how Otto feels. Uh, yeah. I know that as Serena, I'm like, well, maybe there will be a time where Otto <laughs> is a full man and can face him. But for right now, no. No. A man owl. <laughs> um, but it, it's really, I think, just returning. Um, I think there is something in Otto that's really afraid of returning to, very similarly to Val. Yeah. Because, um, and I, I was thinking about this after our session last, or well, our last session. I'm like, oh, I told outsiders this thing, and I am going to be bringing like outsiders to our home. And yes, they have sworn uh, secrecy, like with blood. Sure. However, um, am I excommunicated? Like, am I am I kicked out? Am I? Um, I feel like Allens are very. Um, I like the idea that they're very like they're kind of a Spartan type of thing. Sure. Like it's it's they're cozy. They, they they there's that thing, but owls are predator birds. Yeah. Like, owls are actually terrifying. For sure. Absolutely. Have you um, seen those, so vi I, those I, videos on social media of how 
quiet owls can fly. I mean, you're a burrowing owl, but yeah, how quiet owls can fly through the air compared to eagles, falcons, anything else. Yeah. 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 It's uh, and they're they're hunters. That's very true. They're hunters. Like I, yeah. Um, so, I, I, yeah, I don't know what that is or if it's going to be even an issue. Right. Like, who knows? But um, it's it's kind of a fun little. It's sort of thing. A, a terrifying open question uh, that yeah. that will be a, a lot for us to consider. Uh, when mm-hmm. we talk and also I have to figure out how to tell Carrie in a way that is fair. I know. <laughs> she wasn't there and I was like, oh boy. <laughs> we definitely had that. We definitely had that moment of like, uh-oh. <laughs> oh. Otto's going to have to redo the ceremony again when we get Coco Everybody back. Everybody be cool. <laughs> um, I w- by the way, I do want to say um, Carrie's not going to be with us on this week's episode either. Send her some love. She's okay, but she's she's got some family stuff that she's dealing with. We love her. She'll yeah. be back very soon. So Carrie won't be with us on this Wednesday either. So it'll, it'll still be the four players. But yeah, if you see Carrie on, on, on the Discord or on social media, send her some love. Uh, we love you, Carrie. We can't wait to... We're going to find you. We're going to find you, girl. We're, we're going to find you. Uh, we're not going to let... I'm uh, Val will not let Coco uh, stay stay gone for long. I guarantee it. Um, he's, he's very worried. <laughs> um, so actually what we were just talking about with Otto to mask had a wonderful question. This is our last Patreon question. Does Otto expect to meet the one who left the mark on their arm at the city of glass underground, perhaps? Oh, I hope not. <laughs> yeah. I don't think felt like that was back, back, back home, well, but I don't know. I- I don't know. Like, I don't think that Otto has even considered that. Because yeah. uh, I haven't. But when I think about... Um, so, what I... When you're world building, like, there's things I think about the um, the Scorched figure yeah. that might not be true. Sure. Um, but they are connected to the Obsidian. Right. So, like, there is a chance, I think, that, um, because they are, I think, primordial or Mm -hmm. something. They are, like, they're very old. Got it. Um, Otto actually speaks primordial, which is a a thing, and that's how I've apparently been talking to some things that maybe I'm the only one who can talk to and I didn't know. Um, so maybe, I guess, a solid maybe. Right. (laughs) But also, please no. Run, no. Well, and that, I, I had that. So, yeah, the fact that nothing, so few things about the City of Glass seem to be what they appear to be. And learning that, yeah, that it was not, that it was built on top of something made me wonder yeah. for a moment if we aren't on another plane and we're just somewhere else, maybe even on the islands. I don't, but no. Oh, it's like a lock situation where we're just like. We're just elsewhere. We're, we're just, just elsewhere. But I, I will know. say, it wouldn't make sense with the portal. No, yeah, I don't know if it would. I don't know if it would, and, and maybe maybe it wouldn't track. Maybe it wouldn't track with and the souls as well. The where are the souls coming from again is the biggest question, or one of the big, one of the big questions. But yeah, mm, yeah. Mm, so many questions. Because like, how many followers and mirrors? Because if there's mirror makers, right, well, um, that's a job. One. Yeah there's at least one then how many mirrors are there in the surface or material plane that we're used to right yeah and the automatons i mean we saw ghost <gasps> we saw ghost just put their head through a mirror and and check something and and check on you know to find where saint was at one point so what yeah, that oh. ha- that happened. That happened at the end of twenty one, where where literally yeah. there was just like a mirror, and it was just and to 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 look at something. I don't know if that can be recreated or something. I'm not sure about that, but um, ah, yeah, boy, or maybe it's only through if there's a blessed mirror on the other side because she was able to look through Cristobal's lumbra mirror on the other side. Oh, that's so complex all right that's right <laughs> yeah well i also like i don't know i think the idea of the the technology mm-hmm. like the automatons it is such an fun like 
moral question for for me too very timely as well um, with all the ai stuff going on yeah <laughs> <laughs> very timely yeah because like for uh for auto and well for me too like when like when can humanity be defined yeah right right like um to watch how what, quickly what is how quickly bart became just a helpful uh uh you know npc <laughs> you know? Yeah. right and the um the blacksmith as well yeah. that gave me his arm yeah um, <laughs> He took your pellet. And uh, he got his arm. I took my pellet, my, my just little <laughs> fair trade thing of bones. Yeah. Um, but like, does it? Can my question, open-ended question, can Otto, through the power of friendship, create a robot uprising? Against can I? Oh God! Against who? Who knows? I don't know. <laughs> what are but... we uprising against? Hang on. I don't know. Uh, I'm clear. Um. Well, and I had the question too. I think I posted it on the Discord after we awakened Bart, where I was like, "Wait a minute, yeah. is Lumbra Skynet? <laughs> Lumbra is the massive intelligence." That, well, and and yeah. that I had that moment of realization. I forget if it was last episode or the episode before, where I was like, "Wait a minute, who's making the who's telling the automatons what to do?" And so that's what and it was like. I keep nobody. thinking about. It's like there's just well. <laughs> yeah there's Zach yeah. on their own there's there well so i think about um back to tears of the kingdom yes hey guys hey. um <laughs> welcome back but to the, 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 yeah <laughs> well the, but the constructs in tears of the kingdom in the the tutorial and i please so I, I hope this is yeah. they're so helpful but yeah. there is a, a little snippet a couple snippets of dialogue that are like oh but they're they're performing their tasks that but to no one of years hundreds of years earlier oh and they're like i'm just chopping wood are the automatons I chop wood every day are the automatons the remnant of the civilization that came before Ooh. so welcome to my brain morgan Ooh, that's where I'm, at. I'm loving it that's a great connection i love that yeah. That's very fascinating. Ron has confirmed in chat that having a blessed mirror on the other side gave them the ability to look through, uh, basically. Yeah. So so only if you have a mirror on the other side can you use it as a little window, I guess. Mm, Makes sense. Fascinating. So we can't. Right. That would have been nice. Weird. That would have been nice. Just poke your head through Super weird. Mirror, anywhere. Just hey. go. <laughs> Creepy. <laughs> Yeah, it's so weird. Uh, uncomfortable. Who, who are you checking Creating new haunted ones. <laughs> no. <Yeah. laughs> Just a robot haunted poking forever. its head through your mirror. Yeah. Uh, no, thank you. <laughs> Uh, no, we, thank you. We went a little long, folks, but we started late because we had some update issues. Um, but yeah, but that's been all of our questions. I mean... Anything I look, I I just want to I just want to get back. I just want to get back on Wednesday. Let's get back around to the table because yeah. we got so much more to uncover. We're so excited. Um, as I said, yeah, be on the lookout because I think we're gonna see some Ray character art on Wednesday. Ooh. Um, <laughs> but so much more exciting stuff is on the way. Um, I didn't even talk about. I saw Guardians of the Galaxy three yesterday, Serena. You like it? I mean, yeah, but oh my god. Oh, I hear it's emotionally devastating. It was. I have not seen it. My, but it, it was so. It was so sad. It was so sad. <laughs> it was so sad. I, Ron says, I "Oh my Gantz God, so much movie. crying." It was. Ugh. It was. I. 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 <laughs> I walked out of there. I'm like, I can't believe that was a PG-13 movie. I mean, yeah, there's some cursing and some, yeah, you know, it's violent at times and all that, but mostly just because of the amount of how emotionally devastating it is at times. It was very sad. Oh, no. Do not go oh, in no. just, just, just expecting. I got home and Crystal was like, what happened to you? And I'm like, honey, I, I, I want to just hug I... the cats and be in the corner. <laughs> Uh, because that was, that messed me up, man. <laughs> That's good to know, because all of the rest of the movies have been, like, Just, a fun, campy yeah, ride. Right. So, uh, thank you for preparing me, because I will probably see it, like, soon. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, it was, uh, uh mess, mess, 
messed me up. <laughs> uh, lovely, though. L- great, great movie. Just, just no. Great just, movie. Tears just, streaming down just, your face. <laughs> just emotional gut punch. Just does it isn't isn't sufficient uh, enough. Um, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Goodness gracious. Anyway, fair warning to all our friends out there. Um, Guardians of the Galaxy Three is a great movie, but good God. <laughs> prepare yourself <laughs> uh anyway um so many so much amazing stuff coming friends uh if you haven't seen by the way on our merch store we announced it the uh commemorative poster for the grand bazaar the heroes of bingo reunion is out there it's absolutely gorgeous uh but ron is working on some fun new stuff with merch all the time uh but we're gonna be back on wednesday because uh, we gotta keep we gotta keep digging literally and figuratively yes. um, to find oh. out we gotta get our cocoa back but we also gotta find out what is happening. Uh, uh, I'm gonna go off book and say this. Go. Um, if anybody, Do it. yeah, oh, completely off book. Um, <laughs> if anybody has any suggestions for Otto's coloring book pages, yes. I have been brainstorming a couple of ideas. Yes, 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 yes. But if you have. Um, in chat, images, moments, or just like little doodles you'd yes. like me to do, send them in Discord, drop them in, and I, um, I will, it'll spark my inspiration and I'll just love it. make make them cool for you. <laughs> I'm going to do a full, I'm going to do a full Morgan's Conspiracy Corner cast secret in the next couple days about all, all the things that I've got going on, all my questions. Some of them are auto-related, so I'll save them. <laughs> Uh, but yes, yeah. Uh, uh, some of the there's a lot on a lot about Rhea that I have questions about. A lot about Lumbra and uh, yeah, it just kind of going through my conspiracy notebook. Um, <laughs> but I love it. I love this so much. And uh, yeah, I can't wait. I'll see you on Wednesday. Um, and we'll see you, friends. Uh, get caught up if you're not. And we'll see y'all very soon. Uh, yeah. In the meantime, friends, happy Memorial Day. Love to you all. Um, and humankind. Be both. Be both. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs>